Welcome to Shannon's Club TV, where we relive the heritage of cars in Australia on the road and in competition. We've received a great response to these paired histories on the Shannon's Club website, where you can read the full stories by Mark and me. Coming up, we'll meet a proud owner of our feature car and we get the latest market news from the Shannon's auctions team. Right now though, the car that brought traditional British luxury to the two litre sports sedan market, the Triumph Dolomite Sprint. As the years pass, the Triumph Dolomite Sprint looks increasingly like an exercise in British automotive romance. With its old style luxury interior combining with an ultra high tech engine, it certainly offered more style and performance than many rivals. The standard Dolomite was anything but sporty, while the Sprint version was intended to appeal to buyers who might otherwise have bought an Alpha GTV or maybe even a BMW 2002. For lovers of British tradition, it was like a cut price Jaguar Mark II 3.8 a decade and a half down the bitumen. Just like a Jaguar, the Sprint's romance lay in combining a plush interior complete with timber dashboard with a sporting engine. This was a single overhead camshaft two litre unit with four valves per cylinder, unique in a mid 1970s mass produced sedan. Mark, it was pretty good timing, wasn't it? Just mm. as Triumph was getting back into motorsport. Yeah, well it was in the UK, not only uh, Triumph division, but British Leyland as a whole, because they were trying to stir some sort of patriotic support for the manufacturer in the UK. The Dolomite Sprint did pretty well over there. Uh, Andy Rouse won the 1975 British Saloon Car Championship in a Dolomite prepared by Ralph Broad, the same guy who prepared those the XJC, XJC, yeah. the XJC Jaguars yeah. uh, a few years later, which was a bit of a disaster. So it was certainly a case of mixed fortunes for British Leyland at the time. The performance eclipsed the handling. Rather darty, the sprint moved quickly from understeer to oversteer. The ride was bouncy. And why wasn't it equipped with disc brakes on the rear wheels? Even the solid front discs were quite small and tended to overheat. The Sprint was also somewhat fragile, with the 16-valve engine prey to head gasket issues. The Dolomite Sprint was, of course, a product of British Leyland, even though Triumph Management had never been keen on belonging to that unfortunate organisation. So the Sprint was never developed to its potential. Only on paper was it superior to, say, an Alfetta 1.8 or a 2 litre Peugeot 504. Personally, I long nurtured the desire to own one despite rumours of fragility. The Sprint was available only in lovely mimosa yellow with black corded cloth upholstery. In a world of HJ Holdens and XB Falcons, it had glamour as well as speed. And seeing Dolomite Sprints at Mount Panorama just only increased their appeal yeah. to me. Mm. Mark, how did they go in the two litre class? Well, they certainly had the speed to succeed, but they were never far away from controversy. It was no surprise to see the Triumph Dolomite Sprint competing in Australian touring car racing in the mid 1970s, given the chunky sedan's instant success on British tracks. On paper, it looked like a worthy opponent for the twin cam and RS2000 Ford Escorts that were a benchmark in the two litre class. The Sprint was the hottest model in the Dolomite range, with a potent twin carb two litre four, boasting a clever single overhead cam, 16 valve aluminium cylinder head that could produce more than 200 brake horsepower in race trim. Another strength was its four speed gearbox with overdrive on third and fourth gears. In effect, it was a six speeder, that proved to be a real advantage on the racetrack for skilled drivers who could fully exploit it. The only negatives were its relatively high curb weight and small 13 inch wheels, which restricted both brake size and tyre longevity in racing. John, the Dolomite Sprint, you know, it was a great performance package, but do you, do you think its association with the dreaded British Leyland sort of kept Aussie buyers away? Well, it it couldn't, have, it couldn't have helped, could it, yeah. when you think about Leyland and mm. even the Triumph brand. This was only a few years after the Triumph Stag, which quickly established a poor reputation and sort of right in the 
P76 yeah, uh, Furore. That was yeah. only 1974, so it was very, very recent, wasn't it? It was. Mm. Recent memories and really none of them very good. Mm. And, the, and the Austin Kimberley. Yeah. So because it was under that British Leyland umbrella, perhaps that's why it flew under the radar, because people ignored it, do you think? Well, imagine if it had had a Ford badge. Mm. That's what makes me for example. wonder. Yeah. I, I think the Leyland Association did it only harm. Mm. Yeah, you're yes. probably right. The driving force behind the Dolomite Sprint's three-year race development was Sydney car dealer Ron Hodgson, backed by Leyland Australia. With Bathurst winner Bob Morris at the controls, the Triumph sedan proved extremely fast, often defeating not only the cream of the two-litre class, but also knocking off some top guns in the three-litre division. As a result, Hodgson's Dolomites were never far from controversy, attracting regular teardowns by scrutineers and disputes over parts approval. Hodgson and Leyland Australia also plan to build a limited number of super sprints for racing purposes, with more power, bigger brakes, larger wheels and better aerodynamics, but not enough could be built to satisfy the rule makers. In 1977, Hodgson and Leyland decided to call it quits, citing inconsistent decisions by the sport's governing body CAMS over the Dolomites' legality. By then, however, the sprint had already been withdrawn from public sale, and the bullish but brief era of the Aussie Works Dolomites was over. You can read many other great road and race stories on the Shannon's Club website. My name's Peter Welton. Um, this is my car. It's a 1976 Dolomite Sprint. I purchased a car in 2009. When I purchased a car, it had been resprayed. Since I've purchased it, I've recoated the dash, refurbished the, the woodwork, I've refurbished the wheels, re-chromed the front bumper bar and replaced the carpet in the front and uh, replaced the diff because it was a little bit windy. It was the first mass-produced 16 valves, four valves per cylinder um, that was produced by Leyland, which makes it rather special. Um, that's what makes them go so well. Went very well at Bathurst. They did race them and I believe they still do hill climbs in Sydney. In England, you could get them in different colours. Uh, in Australia, British Leyland decided if they're only going to come into this country in one colour, the mostly yellow with a black vinyl roof. Compared to a modern car, it drives just as great as a modern car. It really sits on the road well. When you come up through these hills up here, you stick within the speed limit and it's just an absolutely great, fun car. As a manual, you change down through the gears, you go through the corners and it just actually just sits on the road well. I've always been passionate about Triumph cars. I started my plumbing apprenticeship doing maintenance work at AMI where they actually assembled the Triumphs and Ramblers. Loved the Stags, unfortunately they weren't made there but they were fully imported. My other car is a Triumph Stag, it's an auto. I wanted a manual and it was uh, more beneficial for me to, uh, to buy another manual, which I did, and I purchased this car, which is a manual four-speed electric overdrive, and they're just a great fun car to drive. Look, um, with Triumph, I mean, I've been in the Triumph Car Club now for nearly 10 years, and it's just great atmosphere. Love driving the cars. This car in particular, it's won a Concorde twice. It only comes out maybe half a dozen times a year, so it's, whenever I drive it, it's just good memories when I drive it. Shannon's National Auctions Manager, Chris Borobon, joins us for Hammer Time. Welcome to the show, Chris. Hello, Mark. G'day, Hello, Chris. The Triumph Dolomite Sprint. Mm. What a little cracker of a car. Do you ever see yep. any of those at the auctions these days, or is yeah. it too late for them? Uh, look, actually, we have seen a few come through the auctions in recent times, mm. so that's, that's been really nice, actually, and most of them actually been in good condition. Uh, being cherished and well looked after. Cherished is the word, I suppose. That's the kind yeah. of car that the dedicated enthusiast gets and just loves madly. Well, I imagine it's a special interest car, is it? Like, I mean, what's a typical uh, Triumph Dolomite Sprint buyer? Is it a, a traditional Triumph lover or lover of British cars? What, who brings those cars? A lover of Mimosa Yellow, I would have <laughs> thought. <laughs> Mimosa Yellow. Is it, is it the sort of person who might have liked to have a Jag Mark yeah. II but can't quite afford one? Look, potentially, because they are good value price-wise. Mm. So, um, you know, I think they've always had an appeal with people who've loved the smaller British saloons. 
um, and uh, I think to find a good example today, a great little car to drive, whether it's as a weekend car or as mm. a club car, a good little example is a good car. Now apparently there was only you know, several hundred brought into Australia. That's right. And they're only on sale for less than a year. So I imagine there's not a lot of these things around. Do you, know, yeah. do you see many of them? And, and what's, what's the attitude toward the car? Is it something that people want to hold on to? I think it's quite a specialised field with the uh, mm. Dolomite Sprint. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's quite a close-knit circle with those cars. Mm. Um, I mean, it's interesting. We say nearly 600 came out, but where are they today? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, you know, we have seen a handful of examples, but if, if I was to think that there were, would have been 600, I, I'd like to know where the rest of them have gone. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. It'd be surprising yeah. if there'd be 100 left, wouldn't it? Potentially, Across yeah. Across the whole yeah. of Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So in that sense, What's the practicality of the car as a collectible? I mean, is there good service backup? Are there parts for this, these cars? I think given the, the nature of the car, it, it's, it's a car that most, uh, you know, most people that work on British cars can look after okay. and the parts availability uh, mm. should be there. Uh, I don't think it's really a car that you'd have too many issues with. Mm. Mm. Come together very nicely after a restoration though. I remember mm. the interior just looked beautiful in what, those cars. What about yeah. panels, Chris? Yeah. Panels. Good question. I, I, I think there's probably enough of a backup here in Australia and overseas for it uh, to be able to... Well, it's an know, international market now, that's right. isn't it? Yep, yeah, great. Yeah. Yep. So um, what's your advice for someone wanting to buy a Triumph Dolomite Sprint? Where, where would they start? I think you'd have to probably start with the Triumph Owners Club. Oh, okay. um, I, I, that, that would probably be a good start mm. um, because I think those uh, you know those guys would actually well, have real a, enthusiasts. Enthusiasts, yeah, yeah, and have a really good idea of you know where the good examples would be. Mm. Um, and, you know, get some advice from the club, and then um, yeah, see it's how often you go the way, isn't it? It's That's often right. the way. Yeah, mm. great. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Thanks, and remember, you can get all the latest auction news on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like your own competition image of the Dolomite Sprint, you'll find them all at Autopix's incredible photo archive. John, looking back at the Dolomite Sprint in Australia, you know, it was never going to meet that ADR 27A emission no, rules. No. So it had a very, very short uh, shelf life, less than a year. The question is, where are they now? I never, ever see one. Well, I think some of them probably lost their lives in motor racing yeah. and club events and so on, but I think really, it just became an unloved car, mm. probably a bit too expensive for people to maintain, second, third, fourth owner, and just gone for scrap, sadly. And quite a lot of competition in that two litre division too, for two litre car buyers, wasn't there? Oh yes, uh, sports sedans, mm. escorts, yep. alphas, and the Japanese, BMW 2002, the Japanese, the rotaries, yeah. the Mazda rotaries, which are now highly cherished. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was an interesting car for the time. It was, and uh, it's one of the few orphans I never finished up buying myself. <laughs> <laughs> Just as well, probably. Probably. <laughs> well, we hope you've enjoyed this nostalgic look at the Triumph Dolomite Sprint. We look forward to your company next time on Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now. See you later.